Kevin McCarthy is caught up in quite the drama, a debacle within his party, being challenged pretty severely and taunted by Matt Gage repeatedly, as we'll look at. Now, this comes within the context of both a debate on appropriations, deciding on funding the government. If they can't come to an agreement in the very near future, the government will shut down. And uh, this is happening right now within Congress. And then also, of course, Kevin McCarthy's announcement that he will be directing a committee to launch an impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. And so while all that's going on, Matt Gates is saying Kevin McCarthy hasn't been as in line with the ambitions of particularly the far right part of the party and thus needs to either get into compliance with the agreement made uh, between the hardcore MAGAs and the Kevin McCarthy branch of the party to give Kevin McCarthy the speakership or Matt Gates will push for the removal of Kevin McCarthy from his position as Speaker of the House. Specifically, the demands from Matt Gates are these single subject spending bills, term limits vote, balanced budget vote, release January 6th tapes to all, find the truth about January 6th, the feds, uh, and then subpoena Hunter Biden. So those are the demands from Matt Gates. If Kevin McCarthy doesn't follow through, Matt Gates is saying he will try to uh, call for a motion to vacate. With that being said, Kevin McCarthy is very unhappy and had a closed door meeting where this took place. Oh, it's appreciated. The House Republican conference behind closed doors today sounded a bit like this. OK, I'm not going to bring those actual nasty words into your living room. But Speaker Kevin McCarthy held a closed door meeting with House Republicans that was intense and became heated. Three sources in the room tell CNN that McCarthy grew frustrated at the threats to oust him as speaker. At one point, McCarthy said, the, said quote, move the effing motion, referencing recent threats from Republican Congressman Matt Gates, calling for a motion on the House floor to remove McCarthy as speaker, to which Gates responded, quote, how about just move the effing spending bills? Obviously, nobody said effing, but you catch the drift. After the meeting, reporters caught up with McCarthy to ask him about these threats from Congressman Gates. Threats don't matter, and sometimes people do those things because of personal things, and that, that's all fine. I don't walk away from a battle. I knew changing Washington would not be easy. I knew people <laughs> would fight or try to hold leverage for other things. Changing Washington, making it less functional. What a brave fighter. Uh, and then you have Matt Gates's response. So Kevin McCarthy has been saying, Matt Gates doesn't actually want the demands that he's laying out. He's not actually doing this out of principle. He is caught up with an ethics committee situation and wanted me to protect him. And I'm not going to do that. And so now he's getting retribution or trying to leverage this to make that happen. So he's making the accusation that this is something separate from what Matt Gates is saying that it is. I will say, by the way, there's no good guys in this story. So from our perspective, it's just watching the mayhem take place. In a sense, it's good, as I've talked about, for the GOP, especially as we go into an election season, to be divided because that makes it harder for them to unite around um, the campaign against President Joe Biden being the presumptive Democratic nominee. But right now it's a bad time because we do want the government to be funded so it doesn't uh, shut down. So this isn't just a complete debacle with not a whole lot of ramifications. There are meaningful ramifications as the chaos ensues. Here's Matt Gates on MSNBC. The speaker says this is really about an ethics complaint. Your response? My response is really going to surprise you. This is about term limits, a balanced budget amendment, and single subject spending bills, just like I've been saying for an entire year. I am the most investigated man in the entire Congress. And right there, you saw Kevin McCarthy lying like a dead dog because I have never asked him to interfere in any ethics matter. I had the okay. FBI and DOJ who hate me investigate me for three years. You covered it nearly. Not so uh, <laughs> you heard what he said there, but. Separate from that, side note, is that a phrase, lying like a dead dog? Do dead things lie? Hmm. Then another moment from this same interview. So all we're trying to do, it's not impeachment, nothing to do with it. It's just answer these questions. And they're playing for Matt Gates a clip of Kevin McCarthy. Had the president been truthful when he said he never talked to his son about business or never dealt with Burisma, never dealt with the Korean way? We would never do this. It's not impeachment. Nothing to do with it. Before playing Matt Gaetz's response, what does that mean? 
This is not impeachment. We're just asking questions. It's called an impeachment inquiry, sir. <laughs> it is definitely in the impeachment ballpark, but they haven't been able to prove that Joe Biden was lying about the things he just said there. Congressman, the question is one, is this an inquiry that's going towards impeachment? If so, what is the high crime or misdemeanor? And uh, is Kevin McCarthy handling this the right way this week or not? Yeah, I couldn't tell if you cut away to Kevin McCarthy or a commercial for low T, uh, because yesterday's impeachment is somehow today's not impeachment. Good gracious, if we actually have to go make the case against Joe Biden, let's hope we have effective people like Jim Jordan and James Comer making the case and, and maybe turn off Kevin McCarthy's microphone for a while. So not holding any punches. Obviously, this is just my opinion would be um, is just a chance for Matt Gates to get in the headlines and get the attention and of course, but it's still fascinating to watch just all out chaos within the GOP, even more than was present before. And we knew this was going to be the situation as was foreshadowed by the fight for the speakership on the part of Kevin McCarthy, the 15 votes and all that went along with that. And whenever you hand your party over to people like Matt Gates, like Lauren Boeber, like all these different individuals we follow on a daily basis, then of course you're not going to be an effective governing party. Of course you're never going to be extreme enough for them. Of course you're going to have mutinies <laughs> come up every so often as Kevin McCarthy is now dealing with and apparently very unhappy about it as we uh, just saw and then one more moment from this same Ari Melber interview it's interesting to see you go to this point with the speaker he seems to be implying that you are not doing these things for the reasons you say but that you were requesting or perhaps through other people requesting some special handling or, or, or treatment in the ethics complaint you're saying that's a lie tonight that is, a, that is an abject lie from a sad and pathetic man who lies to hold on to power. He lied to get power in January when he made this agreement, and he's lying now about the basis for breach. And you know what? Eventually, the lying has to come to an end, and the votes are going to start on a motion to vacate. Uh, I certainly hope that instead of that path, the Speaker comes into compliance on term limits, balanced budgets, and single-subject spending bills. And guess what? If yep. that happens, there will be no motion to vacate, which would which would totally cut against his argument that this is somehow about an, an ethics matter of like the lies of yesteryear. So there he's not bringing up that he also wants the January 6th, all the tapes released to prove the conspiracy theories that aren't obviously substantiated or anywhere near accurate um, and also subpoenaing Hunter Biden. But as I previously said, on its own, these types of debacles are somewhat entertaining from the perspective of those wanting the GOP to be unsuccessful in their battle, especially in this upcoming election against the Democratic uh, Party. But we are in a crucial moment where appropriations is being decided on, so it would be nice to have an effective governing party in these important positions of authority. And this is what you get when you elect very unserious people into very serious positions of authority. And as I've continued to say, I won't go through the list again, but when you look at the Democratic Party's record, when they had the House, the Senate, and the White House for the first two years of Biden's presidency, it's a long and impactful and historic policy record, a list of achievements that will actually impact the lives of Americans. What do we get from the GOP? A whole lot of political stunts, a whole lot of political attacks, but not a whole lot of political uh, and policy achievements. And that's the difference. And I hope people take and understand that difference going into 2024. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be a part of what makes this show possible, plus get access to the full video version of the show and get a bonus show on the weekends, you can do so by going to LukeBeasleyShow.com slash membership. That's LukeBeasleyShow.com slash membership. And there's a link in the description.